Hi everybody, we're on Notch 8, a program on Trainmasters TV where we talk about painting and weathering locomotives and rolling stock. And one of the most valuable tools in our toolkit is the airbrush, and I'm pleased to have Alan Houts with us, who does a lot of demonstrations for Iwata on using an airbrush. One of the most important aspects of using an airbrush is keeping it clean. A lot of people think that's very difficult to do, but you're here to tell us it isn't, right? And it, and it really isn't, Trevor. It's really quite simple. Uh, we've been using this one today on our other segments, and it's time to give it an end of segment cleaning, so we're going to just do that to show you how easy this is. Okay. Now, the first thing normally we do is I just rinse it. All right, okay. and you're rinsing it with the thinner appropriate yeah. to the paint that you were using. The thinner, so. Which is in this case is going to be the Iwata airbrush cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to rinse and I just keep rinsing until I pull it out and I check it against the white and as we can see that's pretty clean. Okay, so okay. you're looking for no pigment. I'm looking for no pigment at all. And this is the same sort of thing you do if you're changing colors as well. Yes, in, it would. in a session. It's mm -hmm. an end of session cleaning and also a, an end of session. Yeah, if we're going to change colors too, yes, then we want to do pretty okay. much the same thing. So we get it to rinse clean. And then okay. you've wiped out the inside wiped of the cup. Wiped out the inside of the cup in case there's anything stubborn in there. Some paints are more stubborn than others. White right. can be stubborn, some blues can be stubborn. And some of them are just so easy you don't even have to use your finger in your paper towel. But in this instance, we just always do it to check. And then after I've got that done, I remove the needle. Wipe it down, and I always just grab it at the base. And always and pull upward. it through, don't try to push always it. Up. We don't want to push back and forth, as you can see, we've picked up a nice piece of that. Also would penetrate your finger or your thumb All right. quite handily. And what you're looking for there again is that you get, again, no, get no pigment, pigment on the cloth. You may get a little bit. If you do, just rinse it again. Keep wiping it off until it's all gone. Okay. Okay, reseat the needle, put it back in, and all this is just finger tight. And then one final rinse. Now this is a terrific little cleaning station you have as well. That's something that Iwata sells. And it has a filter in it and just keeps the mess and also acts as an airbrush holder, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's got a handy stand on it. And the bowl is glass, so it'll take virtually any medium. and it won't hurt Automotive anything. lacquer, whatever you're yes. using. Very nice. OK, now this one, so happens, needs a little bit of help. As we found out earlier, we've through some sort of mishap or another wound up that we got some paint into the rear mechanism where right. we don't want it to go. So we're going to do a full so cleaning. So we're going to do a full strip this. down here. <clears throat> now you shouldn't normally have to do this, except in a rescue situation. Uh, but that could happen if you're interrupted when you're painting. Something happens and yeah, you you have to go. You come back a couple hours later and. And what you yeah. thought was going to be a five minute thing turns into a five hour event. Or, to, or the next morning. Yeah. So yeah, you have to do that. So we've pulled the needle again. I've taken the needle chuck nut off. Now there's a lot of very tiny parts in this procedure when you start getting inside the airbrush. So I notice you're using a special tray here that has sides on it. Right. We don't want any of this stuff rolling away because it can really be You'll be spending all your time looking yeah. on the floor. You're either going to spend a lot of time looking for it, or in the case of some of the smaller components, you can step on them, and that's the end of them. And you're going to be you're off to buy parts. Right. So this, the ribs on the mat, and this is about the consistency. If you haven't used one before, this is think of a mouse pad. It feels like a mouse pad. Okay. But we've got our rib sides to keep things where we need them. <clears throat> now, normally, I'd be using respirator or something, because what we're going to do here is take a little bit of lacquer thinner, and this mm -hmm. is really nasty stuff. So, yeah, so normally you want to have one of these on and work in a well-ventilated space. In this case, you won't be able to hear us if we're talking through these, so we're not going to be wearing them. But look after your lungs, people. Okay, so I'm going to take, and as you can see, we're... Yep, you're taking some of that paint off already. And we're just going to work until the parts are clean. Just roll things around and... Yeah, I keep a couple of these cheap little paint brushes handy. And try and work in some, in this yeah. case we're using some lacquer thinner, uh, which will take just and about everything see, off. See the paint coming off? Sure, yep, yeah, we're already getting some red on that. Apparently it was red paint that got into the airbrush. And
Now, as you said, this is the sort of thing that you don't have to do after every use. But no, we've, we've had a mishap with this somehow or another. We've gotten some paint where it doesn't belong back into the air passages because normally with a gravity feed airbrush, <coughs> the fluid path is from the cup to the nozzle. That's the only place the paint goes in normal conditions, so right. we don't have to worry about anything else. And the most, uh, the average cleaning that I do is that rinse, wipe the needle, re-rinse and put it away. Mm -hmm. And what we think the mistake is here and why we're having to clean it is that the, the needle got pulled back out of the airbrush while there was still paint in the cup. Right. You never want to, you never want to pull the needle out of a gravity feeder. And since it's a gravity the feed, the paint went everywhere, including right. back where it shouldn't. Yeah, because see we've got, even inside our spring guide, we've got a lot of paint here. Well, if you're going to mess something up, make sure you mess it up really. Don't do a halfway job of yes. it. You want to really do everything. Like I tell people at the club, choose your first mistake carefully because we aren't going to let you forget it. That's it. And you can shape your using pipe cleaners, uh, paper towel. You can shape those to yeah. get into things. You don't want to make sure you don't actually leave any of that inside the brush, of course. Uh, there's a couple different pipe cleaners you can get. Some of the big fuzzy ones that have the nylon fabric in them, but these, mm -hmm. are, these are cotton. Okay. And uh, we want to use those because the nylon or the, the artificial bristles on the big fuzzy ones, that'll melt. And I suppose any art supply store that sells a good selection of airbrushes is going to have all of the proper cleaning materials and will have like pipe cleaners that are, are useful for that type of thing. Yeah, they do. Uh, you can also find them in a the cigar store, pipe store, or you can get them out of the Iwata cleaning kit. Everything you need to clean the airbrush in one box, put it away, it's all there the next time you need it. Nice. So you're just generally working around the inside of the barrel. There. Right. You're not trying to shove it in through where the needle goes. No, or... you don't really want to do that. That's, uh, that's a machine surface. So you want to be careful what you go poking in there. Okay. Because it's, it's necessary for the uh, proper paint flow. Okay. Okay. We want to, and, and the needle packing is in there. We don't want to damage that. Right. Not likely you would, but a lot of this is just exploratory. How much paint actually did leak in there? Was it just a few drops? And it only takes a few drops to gum things up. Even sure. a drop in the wrong place will get you in trouble. Now, let's take the front end off. Okay. And this is a now, this neat, is also neat little a gadget here. This is a toolkit that's just been released. Uh, it's got a nice set of nylon jawed pliers in it that lets me get the pieces on the airbrush apart without damaging the chrome plating. So we can take the front end, the nozzle cap off. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take the nozzle itself off of the airbrush. Now the nozzle is one of the most expensive parts of the airbrush, isn't it? It's yes, it is. It's extremely tiny. It's very delicate. Part. It's very delicate. And so uh -huh. this kit includes a wrench specifically designed to safely right. remove that. To safely remove the nozzle. You'll get a spanner style wrench in the airbrush box, but with a spanner style wrench, it's really easy to put a little too much torque on. It's really easy to snap the nozzle apart and, and, then, and then you've bought another one, right. essentially. Okay. And it's a frustrating experience, I know. I have broken them, I have lost them. <coughs> well, and of course they are where all the paint has to go through that, so keeping that yeah. clean is and important. And it is, it is, you know, technically it's a consumable item. Right. They will eventually wear, uh, they don't last forever. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to hurry them along unnecessarily. Sure. Okay, and let's just take a quick look here. Okay. Now that's like a pipe cleaner, but a that's like a pipe cleaner. It's yeah, a, a metal. Yeah, but it does not work as good as the it doesn't work as good as these little inner dentals they gave us. So and you can we get we're getting a lot of junk out of here. Yes, you are. An embarrassing amount of junk. It's amazing that this airbrush sprayed anything, really. Well, they'll they'll take a lot of abuse and still keep on ticking. Not unlimited, but you know they're they're reasonably forgiving. So we've got all the all the major parts done now. So I'm just gonna do a quick external wipe down here. Get okay. any residue off. And then and we're here, going to be ready to put we're it back, go back together. together. Now, it's handy that this little mat that we're using to do this on has a, an exploded view of the... Yes, uh, it is. It has an exploded view. Or an x-ray view, I guess, it, of the it, yeah, and airbrush. It. But, of course, every airbrush will be different. So, if you're 
taking your airbrush apart for the first time, you'll want to make good notes on yeah. what part goes where. Well, or you can you find can, a diagram yeah. online. You can get your diagrams online. Uh, and the, actually, the real difference here on these is the fixed nozzle and the floating nozzle. Uh, We've, we're working with a fixed nozzle here. Mm -hmm. uh, the floating nozzle is clamped in between the airbrush body and the nozzle cap. Okay. <clears throat> so we don't have to thread that one in. It just kind of sits in place and gets held in place. So first thing we do is the nozzle goes back in. Right. So you're just going to seat that and then... I'm going to seat it and then we'll torque it with the wrench. Okay. Now these things, we just do them until they're finger Just tight. gently. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot you to break one, unfortunately, so I just very, very gently tighten it You don't need to it grind down. it in there, just... Right. Then the nozzle cap goes over top. Oh, and let's, let's do a little bit of this, too, just... Because this we can? This is a little bit of needle lube here. Okay. And there's not a lot here that needs lubricating, but I like to put a little on the threads, just so that next time things will come apart a little bit easier. Okay. That's to help keep any paint out of the threads. Right. And, and this is just, it's a glycerin compound. So it's, it's not going it's to affect your paint. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. And as we discussed, the little concave recess machine in the trigger always goes to the rear. All right. You'll so know you, you have your trigger in the right place when you can feel the spring from the air valve hitting okay. it. Okay. So at this point, you just want to... You're just lightly putting that into place, and then right. you're going to build everything in from the back. No, we're not going to just... Also going to put a little lubricant on these threads. Okay. Now there's enough lube. This, this little tube of lube will probably last you between five and ten years. That's how sparingly it can be applied. Right. And again, you're just doing that up finger just tight. Just all finger tight. There are O-rings for air seals, so you don't have to do any beeswax or chapstick or anything like that to close up any leaks. Mm -hmm. And just seat the needle with your finger until it stops. Okay. Tighten the chuck. Put the back on, and we're ready to go. That's it, is it? That's it. Excellent. Now, let's see how we did. Okay. We're going to add some air and a little bit of cleaner for a final rinse. Perfect. And to test and make sure that we put it back together properly. Good we'll idea. We'll know right away we'll know if, if we didn't. If it, blows, uh, if it blows some thinner, we know we've got it done right. There we go. We've got some thinner coming out. That's perfect. Well, that's excellent. Now, Alan and I have explored a lot of things to do with airbrushes on Trainmasters TV as it relates to model railroading applications. Uh, if you want to know more about that, be sure to uh, come and check out that series. If you're just looking for more information about airbrushes, you can go to the IWATA website and you'll find everything you need. Thank you for showing us that, Alan. That's perfect. I'm looking forward to putting this to good use.